Imagine sacrificing Isaac. Could that be God? By that time, Abraham trusted God. But the many times he said he didn't know what God was doing. Moses, many times, had to experience things which were strange. Elijah, Jeremiah, time and time again we read in the Bible how these people were puzzled about how God dealt with them. Job was puzzled how God was dealing with him didn't know how to express it, didn't know how to understand it. But throughout all of these times, God is saying, I am really, really there. And so, also, when you learn to listen to God, you will hear him say some things which are very strange. It is God speaking, but you think, this doesn't make sense. It's not going to be plain sailing. I've got to tell you that. Look at the lies of the prophets. As soon as Jeremiah began to prophesy, everything started going wrong. And he said, everything was all right till you showed up with this prophecy. And he said, Lord, I'm not going to say it anymore. And God said, oh, yes, you are, Jeremiah, because I'm speaking to you. And so, at times, uh, when God brings strange circumstances to bear, we can be puzzled by it. We can say, Lord, what are you saying to us? That's what happened when the uh, Jude, people from Judah discovered that they were surrounded by armies and the Babylonians were coming. It was really terrible. And they knew in the past that God had rescued them. And they began to put their trust in that, saying, Lord, you're going to deliver us in times past. The false prophets said, peace, peace. And there was no peace. And God had to send the real prophets to say, listen, it's not peace. It's war because God is teaching you something. You've disobeyed him. You've rebelled against him. And his honor is at stake. He's not going to ignore your sin any longer. And he's going to deal with your sin and take you into exile beyond into Babylon and yet he's going to return you and he's going to restore you and so when we see God speaking to us in this way we know that God is touching our lives even if it's uncomfortable and so the great two revelation principles when God acts and speaks to us. First of all, he acts in grace. He takes the initiative, even though it might be difficult for us to understand. He nevertheless promises not to leave us or forsake us. He acts in our lives. He takes the first step, but then also he speaks. It's not enough that God should just act. We need to hear his voice. It's not just to see him in action, but to hear him, to understand what's happening to us. So the puzzling things of our lives can be, uh, become, we can begin to understand them and to discern the voice of God.